Hi guys, I'm back working on this cover. I know I said in the last video that I was going to do it in front of the TV, but I decided just to keep stitching. I just want to play with it. The thought of putting it down and picking it up later tonight because it's still Sunday and I'm still filming, I just couldn't. So I thought I will just turn the camera on and keep stitching. So that's the plan. So if you have someone else you want to watch or you want to mosey on and do something else and you might find this a little bit boring because I'm just stitching, more than happy for you to just go and find someone else to watch because there probably won't be a lot of learnings in this unless I think of something, of course. But it's just stitching. I sort of want to get it done and move to the next stage in, you know, unison, I guess, video-wise. Because it'll make, I think, a lot more sense to you guys, your end. Because literally episode after episode follows nicely. And I'm not pulling back a piece from a previous episode. I've even lost track of where I'm at now and how many I've filmed, I think. This will be my fourth one for Sunday, and I think I did three on Saturday. Like I said, still in July. <clears throat> and these are just going to be peppered in amongst my um, Journal of Stitchery creations. I'm just reading some of the comments that have come through on my latest Journal of Stitchery video that went live today i think it's episode uh, let me have a look uh episode 19 so it's the wreath <coughs> and i've had a couple questions there i was just typing replies to and one was from my friend jan now we've never met jan and i but we've chat nearly on every video and she just wanted to know what i was planning for the next few months so I thought I'll turn on the video, I'll get stitching and I'll talk that through and at least then if you are sort of following along to any degree, whether it just, oh, I've started in the wrong spot, just stop for a moment. I'm better off starting down here and coming up and around, excuse me. <clears throat> so as I've mentioned, this is going to be our August project the study of Edith so there'll be all sorts of elements in this stitching and journal making and oh goodness knows what adventures we'll get up to heaps of ideas and not enough time is half of my problem and then that brings us into September and of course the journal of stitchery project will still be going right through to Christmas so September my theme will be William Morris I've got some digital prints or digital kits I've purchased over the year that are burning a hole in my folders and I really, really want to play with them because I just find his designs mesmerising. And I've also got fabrics that match. So it'll be like this, a series of journals starting with the covers and seeing how far we go <coughs> making... Um, making them up um then what's that september october will be corinne do not start another project you need to finish some of the projects you have around you in cases and i'm looking at one particular case it is full of uh, elements i've made journal covers half made ephemera made and it's all based on rachel roxy creations when she was doing the 100 day project every so often when I just felt like relaxing and doing some you know general crafting I would do something so I've got um, I've got a whole box full of Rachel's kits that I've purchased over the years and projects bits and pieces so I really just want to dive into that make some more things, pull it all together into something, whether it be a journal or a couple journals, I don't know. 
I'd say I'd have enough stuff in there to at least do a few journals. They might be just simple journals. I don't know. I'll need to revisit that box of tricks because I'm sick of looking at it. The Journal of Stitchery project came along and it just absorbed me 100%. So I haven't picked up Rachel's kits. I watch her videos daily. I'm a bit of a, a fangirl. So I watch her videos daily just to sort of, I wake up to it basically. Her video is there when I wake up in the morning. So I often turn it on when I'm lying in bed and I just listen and I often doze off. So then I've got to pick the video up later in the day and properly watch it in my craft room or if I'm doing some needlework. So I sort of watch it nearly twice, sometimes three times, especially if I doze off again. Sorry, Rachel, but you put me to sleep. You make me feel relaxed. So does Gail. I don't know how many videos I've got halfway through and found myself sleeping. It's sort of like um, relaxing. And I guess because I'm a crafter too, I'm having a rest. I'm having a break, but I'm still in the zone of uh, craft. Oh, you can't see me on video there. I'm still crafting, but the girls are doing it and I'm having a bit of a break. It's like when you're with a heap of friends and you're all crafting and you go on at it solid and everyone's focused and then you hop up and you might make yourself a coffee and get yourself a muffin and you're just sitting off to the side just watching them suddenly an hour can go by because it's just really cool just watching listening so that's what the girls are for me when i watch these youtube videos i'm they're in the background so um yeah i've got a stack of rachel printables rachel ephemera some half done bases i just need to tidy it up i i just i just know that girl well i don't know but i have a feeling she's going to bring out some new kits and um i do collect her kits i haven't got all of them but i do purchase quite a few of them and um there will be kits that i'll want to get my hands on for sure and having them half printed, half done, half played with in a box is sort of bugging me a little bit. So the month of October is pull out a project that you've shelved, but you still want to do it. But there's just too many other shiny things to look at. That's what October's about. Because Christmas is a whole nother category. And it's awesome we're getting to play with it now with the stitchery but in the scrapbook journal oh my goodness i've got like drawers dedicated to christmas and once i start peeling it all out it just takes over i hear that comment actually from some of the other youtube girls that they just when christmas is on it's on and it just takes over so October is clear some space, finish some tasks, clear the decks, ready for any new kits that Rachel may bring out or any new projects she may inspire me to do. Who knows? I'll be ready for the new year of Rachel Roxy Creations and Sarah. I don't know what they're going to have us do next year. I hope they do something. Even if they do more of the Journal of Stitchery, like it's just such a lovely project to have going on the side. It really rests the mind, I feel. Not if it's stressing you, of course. If you're someone out there really struggling to pull inspiration out and get started, well then I feel for you because that can happen. But it's just, it just makes a change, doesn't it? doing some stitching stitching okay I just want to go across the bottom there with a little bit of this green just to finish piecing my frame together then I can move on to the next side 
um, my last video where I was putting this page together right at the very end of the video I spotted out of the corner of my eye in the garden bed just outside my craft room Pepper my puppy dog and the young bandit my pup were intrigued with something so I thought I wonder what that is and under close inspection I realized that they had got the hose nozzle that I had disconnected yesterday to fill their water bo bottle uh, not water bottles water buckets and it had come off and I it had fallen behind the hose that was attached to the house on a, one of those holders and I thought oh a they didn't see it they weren't there b gee they'd be good to notice it I must pick it up and attach it and of course I didn't so I'm creating this collage of fabrics here <clears throat> and I spot them doing something and guess what yes they have got the nozzle and Peppa when she's naughty I call her Peppa Peach she is in the process of gnawing on it so I'll just finish this line of stitching here because it'll bring me to where I have to knot it off and come up the top here. Ah, <sighs> yes, you guessed it. I'm up for a new nozzle. I'd really like to swear about now, but I won't because I'm trying to be a lady. Do you know the female name for a dog? Mm-hmm. The B word. That is what is going through my mind at the moment. Let me show you my nozzle. Oh my goodness. Look. Look at that. Ah, oh, the that's missing. Look at that. Aren't their teeth amazing? Oh boy. Anyway, that word is coming into my mind. And it is the descriptive word for female dog, but in my head, I feel like I'm using it for evil, not good. <laughs> oh, goodness me. My fault. How do they know these things? How did, how did she find that? How did she trot around the corner of the house, pass the hose with the nozzle attached a hundred times? Hundreds of times. But this morning... Nearly 24 hours after, after the fact, she has spotted it and grabbed it. Unbelievable. I know a dog's nose is pretty good. And I know the Australian Shepherd breed is brain-wise up there with the best. And I know she's way smarter than me. But boy... Hmm, it's amazing, isn't it? If you've seen some of my videos from Journal of Stitchery, I talk about when Pepper went missing and we've had to do a bit of upgrading to our fence, but she still was wanting to dig out because there's sheep and goats on the other side of our fence line. And being that the Australian Shepherd is a herding dog, her natural instinct is to go and explore that. Which, you know, fair enough. That's what she's wired to do. And chew nozzles on hoses, it would seem. Anyway. Um, so we've had to come up with a way of containing her. So we've invested in hidden fence. And I've explained it to great detail. But the, the system is... She wears a collar and around the perimeter of the area that you want to secure, you run a cable, a wire that is connected to power and it has a frequency that goes through it that indicates to her collar if she gets within certain distances, a few things will happen. The first is an audible sound. So she'll hear a little bip, bip, and that's two metres from the fence. 
So if she goes even a little bit closer, it goes beep, 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 which um, lets her know that, you know, something else has changed. So already she's on point. And then if she gets within 50 centimetres of the fence, so that is nose on the fence, which, you know, at the end of the day doesn't happen often. They often just scoot along the side of a fence line, probably about a metre away. But that point of 50 centimetres would mean she's probably on her tummy digging a hole. And at that point, she gets a little electric shock through her collar. Now, the electric shock is identical to when you're wearing your slippers on the carpet and you get a little um, buzz. You know, what do they call it? Static electricity. I do it all the time to my husband. I'll shimmy my feet and then go up and just touch him on the elbow and watch him jump. He, he just loves it. Can you hear my sarcasm? <clears throat> and um, so in addition to that, that system, the sound and then the actual little buzz, you can turn that up, of course, if you've got a pretty thick-eyed dog. I think there's another seven settings or something that you can use to get the dog's attention. And I know Pe Pepper's a soft soul. So I knew it wouldn't take much, just static electricity would get her attention. But the sound has really got her attention. She's so smart that just the sound of it, she's stopped. And then they give you also a couple hundred flags, like our fence line that we ordered is 300 metres, so a pretty big yard. So they also gave us a couple hundred little flags, little wire with a little white flag and you are to put that around the perimeter as well. So now the dog from meters away can see these little flags and they are already considering there's an issue, especially if they've had a little zap. And then to train your dog, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. So some of my regular ladies have heard all this, but um, to train your dog, you <clears throat> hold the collar in your hand you have your dog on a lead and you walk to the boundary where the wire is. So what happens is as soon as you start to approach, the sound starts to happen. Now the collar's not on her, just the lead. So I was able to walk towards it and you'd hear this beep, 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 beep. She heard it. I, with the lead, was able to go, no, Pepper, back, back. And I jumped back like I got a fright. So she's looking at me going, oh, what happened? I heard a sound and you got scared. So I did that a few times. And then I got really close and I had the collar in my hand. So the two little um, prongs that rest against their neck was in the palm of my hand. So I took the current and it was yeah, just like static electricity, but it was enough of a buzz and if you're not expecting it like you do when someone touches your elbow you, you jump it doesn't hurt but you jump so anyway it's gone buzz into my hand and I jumped because I had, didn't know what it was going to be like so my my reaction was pretty genuine and of course she's on the lead beside me so she's like are you all right mum and she's like come straight to me and she's like wanting to cuddle in are you hurt mum they're amazing dogs. They they sense so much. <clears throat> so anyway, I didn't want to do it again because I thought we're on to something here. She can see there's an issue. So we went back to the house and we just sort of played and she relaxed and played a bit of ball and a bit of fetch. And then I went to a different section of the yard. And this is the area where she was wanting to dig. And I did the same thing. And... Um, the moment we approached that fence line, she was already showing hesitancy. And I think it's because she spotted those little flags and she was like, oh, I don't know about this, mum. This is not going to be good. <clears throat> Very smart. So it worked a treat. <clears throat> it's been a couple of weeks and some days she has a collar on, some days she doesn't. I've got to be a little bit careful because it's quite a wide collar and I don't want her to get any skin irritation in that area. So I sort of on and off, on and off. And I'm hoping I can get this behavior 
curtailed while winter is on. Um, and then I just don't need it in the summer because that's just extra heat around her neck that I don't want. Bandit is too young to have it. So I did just the training thing with him, but he hasn't got a collar. Um, I think it's another month before they allow dogs, pups to have it. And even then, I don't think I'll need it because Pepper's showing the way. She's, um, her behavior, he's mimicking in so many ways. When she's naughty, he, he's naughty. He learns a new trick. When she's good and she's doing her sit, stop and stay and drop and all that business, he's picking it up. So it's making it quite easy to train him. And he's not a defiant little dog. He's actually quite a soft little man. Not like her. She... If you reprimanded Pepper when she was a pup, she'd start barking at you and get quite, excuse me, you can't tell me. And she'd be like right at you, you know, woof, woof, woof. And be like, no, Pepper, no. She'd be like, no, woof, woof. Where Bandit's like, okay, mum, I'm so sorry. Can I apologise? As he sort of slinks away. So he like breaks your heart. You've got to be a bit, a bit careful with Bandit. I think he's a bit of a softy where Pepper's a bit more thick-hearted, hence why she's attempted all this breaking out business, gallivanting, chasing livestock, which is a no-no. But, um, yeah, so where my story's heading is we were playing fetch with this toy. It's a, a Kong brand, and it's like a, a little tennis ball the size of that crochet cotton that is encased and they're starting to nibble on it a bit so I'm a bit wary that this tennis ball is a bit of a choking hazard so but it's holding okay because it's really thick fabric then they've got a band that pinches it in then a bigger plastic ball that then pinches in and then there's tassels hanging off of it and it's really quite robust because bandit has been giving it a hang of a chew and of course she does as well so they play tug of war with it and yeah it's been really good so we're down the back of the block playing and of course the perimeter is got this hidden fence system and there's little flags in the distance and she's happily playing and every time I get up and sort of wander towards it she stops and she's like don't go down there mum so we're just sort of making everyone aware that this system is still down there. Anyway, I picked up this Kong thing to throw it and it squeaked. It made a noise and you should have seen Pepper. Prior to that, she was playing with Bandit and being quite bossy. If he, because he's a little bit slower on his feet, she would get to it first and if he come in, she would get quite aggressive with him and not want him to take it. She doesn't really want to bring it back to me where he is very compliant. He will get it and he'll come straight back to me every time. He's going to be great for fetch. Simple lad. Pepper's like, no, I'm going to go over here with it. I'm not going to release it. I'm not ready. And it's a bit of a battle to get her to give it to you to fetch. So anyway, the squeak goes off. Tiny little, little squeak. And... She stops dead. She immediately looks over her shoulder at the flags. And my husband and I sort of look at each other and go, hmm, interesting. She is very aware of the sound, which makes me think she's probably been closer to the boundary than we know of. She's hearing that sound and immediately going, oh, no, stop. So the next probably six, seven times I threw that toy, Bandit got it every time because she pulled right back. She'd run a little bit and then stop. He'd go the extra three or four metres, pick up the toy, flick it around. He'd trot back to me, hand it to me. She did not intercept. She did not steal it. It was unbelievable. So I've been thinking about my strawberry patch. I have a raised garden bed that I was growing lots and lots of veggies in for years until these pair come along and have decided to not only pepper peach, remove the entire sprinkler system from the outer edge of 
my raised garden bed, 30 centimetres at a time, risers, filters, you name it. She's removed it as she was a pup. She was just so destructive. Bandit, not so much, but Bandit tromps through it. He will jump up into the bed and just stomp, stomp, stomp. He might grab a mouthful of sugarcane mulch. He might have some sticks in amongst it. He'll grab that, jump back down and go and sit somewhere and have a little chew. So in there, I've got heaps and heaps of strawberries that over the years from that one punnet of six plants is now... 12 meters by three meter bed of strawberries. So every year they just throw their runners and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So my fear is Pepper Peach, like last spring, she ate as a puppy, not only the sprinkler system, she ate all the strawberries. I had to get out there so quick. It was like she could smell when the sugar content was right on the strawberry, probably a day before I would pick it. And they were gone. So between her and the slugs, which I can't treat to any great success because the pellets will kill your dog. I So I figured if I had lots of strawberry plants with tons of strawberries, the slugs could have some and I'd get some. But then Pepper came along and I was still getting none. So... Where I'm heading with this story is I thought if Pepper is responding to the sound and I can use that sound to adjust behavior, I'm on to something. So the plan is I bought the doggy chewed Kong toy inside. I got my Stanley knife, my cutter to it and I removed the big ball which squeaks and I also got rid of the little ball because I knew it was trouble coming because it was going to be a choking hazard when it came out. It was secure but they were starting to nibble on it. So we've removed the plastic ball that squeaks and now we're using that as a bit of a training tool. It will be used to keep her out of my veggie patch, strawberry patch, but then Yesterday afternoon, the kids in the neighbourhood came out onto the street to play and they were right outside our gate, which lines up to the side gate to the property, which she can get to and see a little snippet of what's happening on the street. And she's developing a bit of a barking where a postie, a walker, the entrance to the street a dog will bark, she seems to know what they're saying, she then will make her way at high speed to that fence and be ready for whatever's coming, barking all the way. So really becoming quite annoying. And she's only 19 months old, so I can see a habit there that's going to be quite annoying. So other than the flag collar scenario, which would mean purchasing more of that the cordage or the wire that they used, we really had not come up with a great idea. So yesterday afternoon, we're sitting there watching a movie and she's barking, barking and barking. So we had a look and yes, the, the neighbourhood kids were out the front playing with their scooters and bikes. So very unpleasant to have a dog barking at you that just really just wants to be with you. She's not aggressive. She just wants to be part of the action. Setting off all the other neighbourhood dogs. So I said to my husband, you keep an eye on her from a good vantage point. I'll sneak down the front of the house where she can't see me and still hidden when she's in full flight of barking. I'll squeak this toy. We'll see what happens. So you can imagine it. Here I am sneaking down the side of the house with this plastic toy that's come out of this Kong thing. She's going woof, 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 woof. I can hear her. She's just, she's bouncing off the ground with the woofing. So she can't see me. She can't hear me. She doesn't know I'm there. And I just go squeak, squeak. And she bolted. It was quite amusing. She took off like a rocket. 
she was like obviously in fear that the next thing would be a static electricity ting to her, her neck. She didn't even have the collar on, actually. Anyway, um, worked a treat. So we then, I went back inside and we just listened. And then I sort of snuck around the house looking through windows to see where she was. She'd retreated back to her sleeping area. It's a caged area that's probably 20 metres by 30 metres. So she can go to the toilet, her bed's in there. We feed them in there and she's nice and safe. She was in there just sitting, <laughs> thinking. And I bet she was thinking, my goodness, that that fence is up here near my my regular woofing area. And so we waited, we waited an hour, two hours. It was getting darker. The kids were still out there. I could hear them giggling and playing. She did not go back. She did not woof. Quiet fantastic so this morning Sunday morning there's usually a couple people that will walk up the street and if they've got a little white fluffy dog she is right in amongst it I did not hear a wolf so I don't know if we've fixed the issue or not who knows but I'm liking the idea that I can have a squeaky ball in my hand or hidden in my pocket so when we do something and, and there's a behavior that I don't like, well, it's probably not so much behavior, but it's more of an area that I don't want her to access for whatever reason, safety or, you know, whatever. I can just squeak the ball and she straight away is going to recognize that sound as being a potential issue for her. And she doesn't even have the collar on. So it's opening up a whole whole area of thinking for me and back to the reason of the conversation is the strawberry patch so I was out there hosing the strawberry patch filling up their water um, water tub that's on that side of the house and that's how the nozzle got disconnected and not reconnected and we've seen what happened there but I was looking at the strawberries and they're throwing the flowers now and there is a little bit of fruit just starting to come on but it's a little bit stunted because I haven't watered it as much as I probably should have. Strawberries like a lot of water. We've had a lot of rain, but obviously they're fruiting now and could do with probably a watering once, maybe twice a week. So that's why I was out there and I was checking them out. And I'm like, oh, look at the crop of strawberries coming. If I give them water and maybe a bit of Thrive, they will be beautiful. Then I've got this dog who will want to eat them. We've got Bandit. He'll also want to participate. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm hoping that this little ball has finished the barking. And I'm going to try it on my strawberry patch. But I'll just have to wait a little bit longer to when she is showing an interest in it. So probably when the fruit is just starting to ripen, they tend to smell the sweet sugars that are coming on. So that's my plan. I think I'm onto something. I didn't think she'd be that easy to train. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself and she's going to... She's going to return to her wicked ways, but I don't know. And if I can nip Bandit in the, the bud, so to speak, now and catch that before he becomes, you know, 18 months old or 19 months. She's two in October. I keep saying 15 months old, but she's actually older than that. Bandit is four months and learning all of these naughty things, so... I'm feeling quite liberated that I have potentially a doggy training solution. It does mean that I'll never ever be able to buy a toy for them that has a squeaker in it because she will freak out if this squeak becomes 
a training tool of no beware don't go don't move don't 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 advance don't bark <laughs> so yeah there's my dog training exercises that I'm going through she's been a trial this girl she's single poured single-handedly single poredly removed my entire sprinkler system not only from my veggie patch but from everywhere 30 centimeters of pipe at a time she's then finished that and the main lines of pipe that you know are probably as thick as that cotton most of it's quite thin like your finger your little pinky and then underground was the pipe that brings the water to an area and then up comes the little pipe carries on and then you have your little sprinkler heads and risers well, she's pulled all the risers out she's pulled all the pipe out and our blocks are half an acre so I've got a few garden beds not a lot but a few and to help them get established I took the time and put in this sprinkler system and it was great because we we're going through some drought times so there wasn't a lot of water coming from the sky so it really helped me get everything established and because it was big areas of garden it was costing a few dollars to get all the plants and I didn't want to lose them due to my lack of time to water so it's the first time I've actually put a system in and my husband connect a little timer which was fantastic because I could then set it for 15 minutes just as the sun's rising and 15 minutes just as the sun was setting depending on the plants of course some of them don't like that wet wetness around them going into the evening but um she's destroyed it and the the main line pipes there was a few of them underground probably about 10 centimeters in the dirt because we were landscaping the place at the time it was easy to put in these pipes she's she can either smell the plastic hear the water i don't know but she dug them all up and once she got you know about that much out of the ground she just kept pulling at it until the whole lot come out so yeah it's all gone and she has removed it all thank you pepper But anyway, we love it a bit. It is what it is. It's the trials and tribulations of having a pup. Bandit, on the other hand, he's a gentleman. He just doesn't seem to show an interest in these things, which has been good. But he is a bit lazy. So I think that's his calling. He's very chilled. But Pepper's a lot more hyper. A real true Aussie Shepherd working dog. She should be on a farm working her little red butt off. Helping a farmer. So I'm slowly getting through this cover. This piece will be stitched. It won't take long. Then I've just got to do the two at the top of the page. That won't take long. Just running that line onto my needle right through. Because I've got a big needle, you can gather it up. And just ease that through. Lovely. Now I just get my end out of there because it's caught up in that line of stitching. Finish that little bit there off. Uh, 
really happy with the way this covers come together. It's so not planned. And I like it like that. Try not to plan too much in advance because it always changes. All I do is just sort of get a feel for the colour that I want to use and then just see what comes of it. I just piece it together. Okay, so I'm going to do a running stitch around this little piece. So it is time consuming, but it's not too bad. Once you get a roll on, I suppose piecing it together and doing this stitching, I've created two videos about 50 minutes per video. So that's how much time has gone into, let's round that up to an hour. So two hours it has taken me to do this cover. Which is not too bad. I could probably spend more on it and add more detail and elements, which I might do yet. We'll see once I've sort of finished this stage. I don't call it slow stitching for nothing. Okay. I will go around that corner, but my thread is getting a bit small, so I might get maybe one more stitch in. This uh, overcast stitch is a little bit slower. It's not like the running stitch where you can sort of scoot along an edge. How are we going for time? Plenty of time. I might just get it finished. If not, maybe a little bit more stitching. Oops, look at those stitches. They are like a dog's breakfast. There's a crooked one there, but this one just had to come out. It was just too small. I'm sitting back in my chair, I'm relaxing. I'm getting a bit stiff in the neck. So I need to sit up. I might have to take a break after this video. Maybe do a bit of editing of videos and then see how the day progresses because I'm getting stiff in the back of my neck up to my head. And that's from sitting and working in this space. So I need to stretch. Probably need to go for a walk outside and see what those pair of dogs are up to. It's gone awfully quiet. So they must be napping. They haven't trotted past my window for about 10 minutes, so I bet they're napping. They've had their breakfast, they've had a play, they've destroyed something. Now they're going to have a nap. What a life. Okay, where have we get to? This cover is probably not as grungy as I probably would have liked it, but I'm thinking once I do the machine stitching around the outer edge and maybe add some more decorative elements. I don't know what that'll be, but who knows. 
but I still do like it. It does sort of have a grungy feeling, probably not as grungy as I had in my mind. Maybe the other one will be a bit more that way, the other paper bag journal. Oh, that stitch is not sitting right too. It's come up. So I'm rushing. I'm looking at the clock, thinking I've got probably five minutes left and I'm trying to get as much as I can done. And in the process, I've made two stitches. They just aren't as nice as they could be. So I'm just going to take a breath, and just relax, focus on what I'm doing and not worry about the clock. If I don't get it all done, that's all good. It's not much left to do. And at least it's finished. Because I really want to get it attached to the journal so the glue can dry. Okay. If I could hear a wolf. That's bandit. I wonder someone has walked down the street i just saw pepper race past the house she is going to the side boundary as we speak she's in the patio area nowhere near the side boundary wolfing so that's okay she just knows that that side is a problem for her wow there she is no she's at the side one wolf. So maybe my plan is a little flawed still. She didn't do multiple wolves. I believe there is someone out the front. I can hear voices. And she's not going crazy. So maybe one wolf and then she's like remembered. I don't know. She's thinking, oh, I'll just get a quick word in. <laughs> pretty good she's still she's still quiet mm. there she is she's just walked past my window so that means she has gone around there she said woof once and she has left the scene and come back Unbelievable. But we will see. I still think there's room for improvement. So we'll see how the day goes. Being a, a Sunday, there'll be people walking all the time. So I'm just going to put a couple little stitches there too. So all I've got to do is go up here and across and a little stitch there. And the cover is finished. So that's great. I can then glue this into position and um, move forward. So I hope you don't mind that this whole video was just stitching this down. It's probably a little boring, but anyway, it's a job to be done. Now I can do something else this evening instead of this. I can maybe pick up my journal of stitchery and do a little bit of work on that. Not that there's anything pressing there at the moment. We're sort of just waiting for our prompts. As I said, it's Sunday and I'm filming a heap of these videos. So our prompt is on a Wednesday. The girls will tell us what the next theme is or inanimate object we need to create. Okay, lovely, that's coming along. Let's get a bit of that tension off of that stitch line. Okay. And I just want to put a couple little stitches 
down the bottom there just to make it look like that edge continues so just a couple little stitches in there probably just one would do it it's finicky but and it may end up getting covered with something but at the moment it's needed now I just want to test before I go and forget to look I want to test where was I, I want to test that edge yeah I'm gonna run another line of stitching down there I've still got a few minutes because it's a bit of a, a pressure point you when you grab your journal your hand is wrapping around the center of the journal I just want to know that that's nice and secure. Okay, so there, even that's a bit. So I'm just going to sneak through there with another few stitches just to catch, catch that down. Can't believe Pepper didn't bark. How good is that? Hopefully the kids come out to play again this afternoon. They usually do. They're all back from their sports and the street fills with kids playing. And of course it drives the street dogs nuts. There's two border collies across the road. Um, there's two white fluffy dogs next to that house on the opposite side of our street. I think they're Maltese. There's Pepper. She's under the patio, so it's okay. She's my side. She's just bolted around there. And I can't hear her. No, she's back under the patio. So, and then next to us is a big German Shepherd. Well, I think he is. I've never sighted him, but he has a big, deep voice. So in my mind, he sounds like a German Shepherd. At the top of the street, the entry to our street, there's two huge German Shepherds. A little white poodle on the corner. And then there's two other voices I hear that I don't know what the dogs are, but that lot go off first and by the time whoever it is gets down to the end of the street where I am they're greeted by two border collies two Australian shepherds two white fluffy dogs and a random voice that I don't know what it is but I'm imagining it's a German shepherd it's just got a really deep tone so it could be a rockweiler it could be who knows and then down the very end of the street we have a a beagle Jack Russell another white fluffy dog and what's that other one? I don't know. I think he's a bitzer. So you can imagine when they all start discussing who's in the street, it's quite obnoxious. And I don't want Pepper to be part of that behaviour. She can have a wolf. You do need to know when someone's around. But there's just this one area that she's going to where she's getting too much of a bird's eye view. I'm just running a stitch line down the centre of this piece. It just feels a little bit flippy floppy. So I've got a little bit of cotton here that should make distance. And like I said, I'm following the stitch line of the created piece, the crochet ring. So I'm picking a straight line right through the center. I just want to know that that's nice and secure. As it is, it's a little bit lacy, so it's got the potential of catching on something, especially if you're putting your journal into a bag, you could potentially catch it. So the more stitches on it, the better, I think. Because it'd be pretty hard to repair once you've torn it. Okay, now I need to knot that off. I don't have a lot of 
thread. So if I can get another cheeky stitch in there to go back through. And that will be done. So I'm happy with that. Okay. So there we go. It's taken about two hours from start to finish. Give or take a bit. Okay. So I do need to now iron it to get rid of that pen mark that I used to get my line straight. Just grab my cover. So that's now going to be on the inside and this is going to be on the outside. Like so. But that's not set in stone either. I might decide to change my idea there and look at the pretty bird on the inside. Otherwise he disappears to the cover. That's the front. That's the back. Who knows? We'll decide. But it's all good. I will uh, leave you there and iron those lines out and my piece is ready to attach to my cover. So have a lovely day and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.